The president, please be seated. The trial chamber is now back in session. Nous reprenons l'audience. First, for this afternoon proceeding, Tout nous allons débuter l'audience de cet après-midi. The trial chamber will make an announcement of, uh, of two La decisions de as follows. De First, the trial chamber première décision is the oral decision on admissibility of material on a case file as evidence. The trial chamber is currently seized a request from the co-prosecutors to use three documents in evidence before the chamber. These requests, which are opposed by the defense, refer to the following documents. A. Statements sont of two deceased witnesses suivant, tout de taken by representatives of the non-governmental organization, Documentation Center of Cambodia, à savoir le Centre de Documentation du Cambodge, DCCAM. Excusez-moi, Monsieur le Président, les interprètes Excuse ont du mal me, à suivre. Si vous, si vous pouviez parler plus lentement. Merci, Monsieur le Président. So perhaps you might slow down. Thank you, Mr. President. The President, thank you, Mr. Roux. Je vous remercie, Maître Roux. I will now read the decision Je vais again. Reprendre la lecture de la décision. Oral decision on admissibility of material on the case file as evidence. The trial chamber is currently seized of request from the co-prosecutors to use three documents in evidence before the chamber. These requests, which are opposed by the defense, refer to the following documents. A. Statements of Two deceased witnesses taken by representatives of the non-governmental organization Documentation Center of Cambodia placed on the case file as documents D-59 slash 4 and D-59 slash 12. B, a statement of the accused taken in May 1999 by a representative of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, UNHCHR, placed on the case file as document the nine. It is also seized of a further request by the co-prosecutors for authorization to use document number 19-25, the so-called Chun Soti report before the chamber. A detailed written decision with reasons. Une 
Decision écrite a detailed written decision with reasons on these matters has been finalized by the Chamber and will be issued as soon as the necessary translations are available. This is expected shortly. In the meantime, the Chamber announces its oral decision in relation to these specific documents as follows. The trial chamber grants the defense request in relation to the deceased witness statements. The SICAM article and the UNHCHR interview du représentant des Nations Unies, de l'HCDH, and excludes these documents as evidence in the present trial pursuant to Rule 87.3 of the Internal Rules, grants the Office of the Co-Prosecutor's Request in relation to the Chun Soti Report and permits it to be put to put before the chamber and subjected it to examination in accordance with Rule 87.2 of the Internal Rules, orders the Office of the Co-Prosecutor to provide the defense with the original translation of the Chun Soti report. This is the first decision of the trial chamber for this afternoon. Décision rendue par la Chambre de première instance dans le cadre de cette audience cet après-midi. Next, the trial chamber will make an announcement on a decision on request by the co-prosecutors yesterday as follow. The Office of the Co-Prosecutors has sought guidance concerning the method by which documents relating to the testimony of expert Dr. Craig Etcheson should be put before the court. The OCP has notified a list of 148 documents under document E55.1. It seeks to put those documents before the court. That list sets out full identifying data of each document, including the state of translation, the original language, and a summary of each individual document or excerpt. For example, item 4, the trial chamber appreciates the efforts made by the Office of the Co-Prosecutors to assist it and the parties in managing the extensive material on the case file and encourages it to continue to produce such consolidated material in the future. In response to the Office of the Co-Prosecutor's request, the trial chamber now sets out its guidance in relation to this notification. One. En réponse à la notification Rule 87.2 la règle 87.3 et 87.3 is règles fundamental to the conduct of a fair trial. À l'administration d'un procès équitable. Documents which any party or the trial chamber intends to use to support the decision of the chamber must be put before the trial chamber and read out in full or summarized. Only those documents or parts of documents which have been put before the trial chamber in this way 
and have been subjected to examination are considered formally put before the court. The requirement of Rule 87.2 to subject a document to examination is fulfilled if a party makes no comment. Only those parts of documents which have been summarized are considered put before the court. For instance, if only one chapter of a book is summarized, only this part is considered put before the court. However, if discussion of the document extends beyond the initial summary, the entire discussion is available for the trial chamber decision. When a document is to be put before the court, the party introducing it should specify whether it seeks consideration of the entire document or not. If the party seeks to introduce only part of the document, it should specify which part is relevant. When a document is put before the court, any party has the right to object to its admissibility for any valid reason. Parties also have the right to seek further information or clarification concerning a document that any party seeks to be put before the court. In summary, the filing of the consolidated list attached to E55 does not comply with Rule 87. Each document must be read out or summarized in order to give the parties and the chamber the opportunity to assess the document. Two, in principle, summarized documents should be in Khmer as the official language of the court and the language of the accused. Three, the parties are reminded of Article 15 of the Torture Convention, de la Convention contre la torture, which says qui établit, each suivant, state party shall ensure that any statement which is established dont il est to have been made as a result of torture, torture shall not be invoked as evidence in any proceedings. Except si ce against contre la a person accused, accused of de torture, torture as evidence that the statement was made. These are the decisions, and I now would like to give her the floor. To judge Cartwright. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, one small correction to the uh, decision that has just been given by the President, uh, which I think derives from the um, document before the, uh, in, uh, before the interpreters. Under one, the reference is to Rule 87 as being fundamental to the conduct of a fair trial. 
We do not intend to suggest that only Rule 87.3 uh, is relevant. So that should read, Rule 87 is fu fundamental to the conduct of a fair trial. Thank you, Mr. President. À l'administration d'un procès équitable. C'est bien de cette règle-là dont il s'agit. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. Monsieur Kaiban. Le Président. Next. Before I give the floor to the co-prosecutor, the trial chamber would like to give the floor to Judge Carwright since he has some questions to be put forward before Dr. Greg Etchison. Judge Carwright, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Dr. Etchison, would you please summarize those parts of your report, uh, overview of the uh, hierarchy of democratic Kampuchea, which have not yet been the subject of questions to you. Are you in a position to do that? I require the briefest of uh, summaries. Yes, Your Honor, of course, I'd be pleased to. Thank you. I may wish at various junctures of this process to confirm with you whether or not a particular section has been adequately discussed previously to constitute a summary. This document in the case file is formally described as a written record of analysis to reiterate for the record what we discussed yesterday. The case file document number of this document is D2.15.1. The English ERN is 0014-68-22-2-2 through 0014-68-87. The main body of the paper is 37 pages long and it begins with a section entitled Overview of Hierarchy of Democratic Kampuchea, which is the title which we have been using to refer to the entire report. The first section describes the center, the zones, the sectors, and the districts of Democratic Kampuchea, and this has been previously discussed. The second section of this report is titled Standing Committee. We have also discussed this section at some length, and the various parts of this section of the paper, including personnel and organizational matters, the composition of the standing committee, the security responsibilities of the standing committee, the economic policy responsibilities of the standing committee, and the communications patterns and capabilities of the standing committee. The next section of this paper is titled Zones. It begins by describing the statutory responsibilities 
of zone committees as described in the CPK statutes and includes a graphic which shows the zone leadership of democratic Cambodia. This section of the paper goes on to describe personnel and organizational matters. There were the responsibility of district committees, the security responsibilities of district committees, uh, excuse me, of uh, zone committees, the economic responsibilities of zone committees, which included prominently achieving the three tons per hectare target of rice production and the construction of elaborate hydrological works. This section of the paper concludes with an examination of the communication patterns of zone leadership, both to upper echelon at the standing committee and to subordinate echelons at the sector, district, and commune echelons. The next section of this report is entitled Sectors. It begins by briefly describing the statutory responsibilities of sector committees as provided in the CPK party statutes. It includes an illustration of sector leadership by showing the leaders of the various sectors of the Eastern Zone. This section of the report continues by discussing personnel and organizational matters that were of concern to sector committees. And we have discussed this in part previously. It continues discussing the economic responsibilities of sector committees, in particular the three tons per hectare production target and the singular focus on the construction of dams, canals, and other waterworks. This section of the paper concludes with a brief discussion of the communication patterns of sector party committees, including their communications with upper echelon at the zone and center and subordinate echelons uh, at the district and commune or cooperative. The next section of the paper is entitled Districts. It begins with a brief overview of the responsibilities of district committees as provided in the statutes of the Communist Party of Kampuchea. It includes an illustration of district leadership by depicting an organizational chart showing districts and their leaders in the Northwest Zone, Sector 5. The ne next section of this report discusses personnel and organizational matters that are the province of district party committees. It goes on to discuss the security responsibilities of district party committees and then continues with the economic responsibilities of district party committees. The next section of the report is entitled Communes cooperatives, branches. This section begins by explaining that the branch was the lowest level of the organizational hierarchy in the Communist Party of Kampuchea. This section of the report continues by discussing personnel and organizational matters at the branch echelon of the party. It then discusses security responsibilities at the branch echelon and economic responsibilities. This section concludes with a brief discussion of communication patterns 
at the branch echelon and how the branches communicated with upper echelons at the district, sector, zone, and center. The next section of the paper is entitled Party Center Military Committee. It describes the constitutional arrangements for military organization in democratic Kampuchea, and then briefly discusses the provisions in the statutes of the Communist Party of Kampuchea for military organizations, and goes on to describe the composition of the military committee of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Kampuchea. The remainder of this section discusses what we know Dans la suite de ce chapitre, about on discute the activities de ce que and policies of the Party Center Military Committee. Du comité militaire du centre du parti. The next section of the paper chapitre discusses suivant, the general staff of the Revolutionary Army of Kampuchea. De this section includes an organizational chart on y trouve un which describes un what qui we think we know ce que about the structure of the general staff. De la de la RK. This section of the paper concludes Cette with a discussion of the par, uh, communications capabilities and patterns of the general staff de of the Revolutionary Army of Kampuchea. The next section of the paper looks at lower level echelons of the Revolutionary Army and is entitled Division Military Commanders and Commanders of Independent Regiments. This section of the paper begins with a section titled Personnel and Organizational Matters and includes an organization chart which describes the independent regiments les divisions and divisions et régiments indépendants of the Revolutionary Army of Kampuchea as of early 1977. 1977. This section of the report Cette partie du rapport goes on to discuss the internal and external security responsibilities of the Revolutionary Army of Kampuchea De la RK en as well de as the economic responsibilities of the Revolutionary Army. Uh, qui de la RK. This section of the report Cette partie du concludes with a discussion of communication patterns within the Revolutionary Army of Kampuchea. Au sein de la RK. The next section of the paper Chapitre is suivant. entitled Ministries. This section of the paper Cette partie du discusses the executive body of democratic Kampuchea, uh, otherwise known as the government, and the legislative and judicial institutions, ainsi que such as they were. Et it includes a description of the various appointments which were made de in various areas of responsibility within the government, and a diagram depicting my understanding of the structure of the government of democratic Kampuchea. This section concludes with a more detailed analysis of what was happening inside De various ministries of democratic Kampuchea and Kampuchea a variety of bureaucratic and organizational difficulties <laughs> that were encountered in these various ministries. This section concludes with a discussion of communication patterns de within and among the ministries as well as between the ministries and upper echelon at the party center. Finally, enfin, this report concludes with a brief discussion of the constitution of and functioning of the People's Representative Assembly. The report continues 
le rapport with Annex A, which consists of 355 footnotes that cite 161 different sources that I relied upon in preparing this report. I'm given to understand that the prosecutors wish to enter into evidence before you 148 of those 161 sources. Also annexed to this report were two additional annexes which included all of the sources that I relied upon in preparing the report. Do you find this to be an adequate summary, Your Honor? Est-ce que j'ai ainsi suffisamment résumé le rapport, Madame la Juge? Yes, thank you very much, Dr. Richardson. That's most helpful. Mr. President. Monsieur le Président. So, Mr. President. Mr. François Roux, you take the floor. Maître Roux, je vous en prie. Monsieur le Président, Mr. Roux, vous aviez demandé à la défense euh, d'indiquer euh, sa position sur des documents with regard que to les coprocureurs euh, avaient distribués co aux parties hier après-midi. Il est peut-être temps que nous vous communiquions nos observations et précisément, M. Etchison vient de nous indiquer qu'il y a une annexe A à son rapport, mais également a-t-il dit And he deux also autres said pièces complémentaires that there are two other supplementary Il semblerait, en effet, mais je parle au conditionnel, qu'il y ait également une annexe B that there is also an et une annexe B C. And an annex C. Malheureusement, la défense n'a pas été en possession d'une traduction de l'annexe B ou de l'annexe C. Et c'est après de multiples recherches et j'ajouterai perte de temps que nous avons fini par comprendre que les références Finally came to understand des documents that des deux derniers documents of the last two documents indiqués dans la liste d'hier matin, list, les références list, numéro is, 39 that is et numéro 39, 39 renvoyées effectivement à cette annexe C, to annex C qui n'a jamais été communiqué Which en langue française à la défense. Voilà, nous avons donc euh, l'explication de la raison pour laquelle nous ne retrouvions pas ces documents the why we were ni les références. To find the document or the reference numbers. Euh, apparemment, sur Zaylab, ça ne figure même pas Apparently, de manière classée. This is not even classified in Zylab. Mais donc, Monsieur l'expert confirme qu'il y a bien un annexe C à son rapport. La défense regrette de ne pas avoir été destinataire d'une traduction de l'annexe B et de l'annexe C that it was not provided with en the français. translation of annexes B and C Cela in the French. Des pertes de temps This inutiles. would have saved us time. Merci. Thank you.
The President, uh, Judge Levin, Judge Levin, will take the floor. Oui, plus précisément concernant ces documents. Judge Levin, specifically with regard to these documents, que, uh, de document I note 30, that with regard to document number 30, document en originale Khmer, it is a Khmer a priori, original. Il y a uniquement un résumé qui and existe there is, en it anglais, only a summary in English. There is no French version of this document. Est-ce que c'est exact? Would that be correct? Et est-ce que vous entendez Further, appuyer votre rapport do you uniquement sur le résumé? Have your support, your Et est-ce que vous only on the summary? Qui a effectué ce résumé? And could you tell us who prepared <coughs> the summary? Yes, Your Honor. Oui, Monsieur le Juge. There are some documents for which I do rely pour on an analytical summary of the document. Je, je and so far as analytique. a full translation is not yet available. Il n'y a pas ce genre de, de traduction In complète qui serait disponible pour ces documents. Document number 30, document to four, which you refer, auquel vous pouvez l'évoquer, the confession the S21 confession of Kum Chum, if I am not mistaken, that summary was prepared by si je me trompe, ce résumé était Dr. Stephen Hedder, par Monsieur Stephen Hedder, who was an investigator qui était with the Office of Co-Investigating Judges. Au bureau des Monsieur le juge, excusez-moi, euh, vous venez de parler des Mister aveux à la pièce numéro 30. Si nous parlons bien in en ce moment de l'annexe C de votre rapport, la pièce numéro 30 est un télégramme. This, the Donc, ce ne sont pas des aveux. Ce n'est pas un aveu, ce n'est pas une confession. Peut-être faites-vous allusion à la pièce numéro 30 d'un autre document to document number 30, which is uh, appended to another document or to another bundle, I'd like to be sure that we are talking about the same thing. Uh, Peut-être une question à ce moment-là au bureau des coprocureurs. Like Est-ce que la liste qu'ils ont notifiée à la Chambre et au Parti des documents reprend le même ordre que les documents tels qu'ils sont mentionnés à l'annexe C ou pas Est-ce que la liste qu'ils ont notifiée à la Chambre et au Parti des documents reprend le même ordre que les documents tels qu'ils sont mentionnés à l'annexe C ou pas Est-ce que ce sont les mêmes les la même Est-ce que c'est la même présentation ou est-ce qu'elle diffère Est-ce que c'est la même Est-ce que c'est la même présentation ou est-ce qu'elle diffère Est-ce que c'est la même Est-ce que c'est la même présentation ou est-ce qu'elle diffère Est-ce que c'est la même Thank you, Your Honor, for your question. Monsieur Bates, merci, Monsieur le Juge, pour cette question. Uh, this matter is slightly complicated by the fact that there are two lists entitled Annex C. In the introductory submission, Annex C contains a large number of documents relating to a wide variety of topics. De the Annex C that is attached to the Quand end of Dr. Etchison's report is a totally different list of documents, liste de documents and rather, avoir, unfortunately for us, confusingly with the same name, que, uh, y a the entre les Annex C, C to Dr. Etchison's report Etchison contains a list of uh, 60 documents. De documents, and those documents are described in the table uh, that we have provided uh, to the court, the table which contains in total 148 documents. Qui en total 148 documents. The uh, Craig Etchison, I'm sorry, I'll give the, I'll give the document number, 
of that table. It's E55.1. The, the documents, the 60 documents from Craig Etcheson, Annex C, can be located if one looks at the second column of E55-1. And if your honours will follow me down the page, from document one, that is listed as case file document IS Annex C. The next column is document uh, 2.1. That is a, an introductory point, submission un, document. Ça, est un document qui est, uh, lié uh, moving down uh, to number two, Je the same again. Cran, numéro deux, même chose. Number three, numéro the same trois, again, même chose. an introductory submission document. De document lié but documents four, Mais le document, five, les six, quatre, cinq, and seven six, sept, bear the description under case file number D2.15, D Annex C, Annex C number 37. 37. And that reference, or the first part of that reference, D2.5, Annex C, refers to Dr. Etcheson's Annex C. It's, I'm afraid, rather convoluted and a little complicated. Um, it has been further complicated by the process in which those documents were put onto the electric, ele electronic case file in Xilab. And I'll do my best to explain this as carefully as I can, because it may go some way uh, to, for the court to understanding, uh, for the court's understanding. My understanding is that Je crois donc comprendre. Although uh, the court management system que bien que le mis en place had in hard copy CMS the 60 documents of Dr. Etcheson's Annex C, qui à la they were not C given du de individual Etcheson Annex C evidence reference numbers. Un de reference and unfortunately, the only way in which they can be found in Xilab, in the Zilab, electronic uh, case file system, le is by going to introductory submission Annex C, par C du then under witness interviews, sous then under the subfolder witness interviews, they are located at documents 18 to 83. Now, the co-prosecutors don't know why the court management service adopted that approach. We are seeking to rectify it because, it, as I've sought to explain, it is rather confusing for all parties. It's certainly not of the co-prosecutors making that we've had this rather complicated numerology. I'm sorry, yeah, numerics. Um, but the, sh the, the very short answer to Your Honour's question is that document E55.1, the supporting documents to Dr. Etcheson's written record of analysis, do contain his Annex C 60 documents. But in order to locate them, one must look at the second column and find the references D2.15, Annex C, document number one, number two, number three, etc. I hope that assists in a rather complicated process as to why these documents have been a little difficult for all parties to find. Judge Lavagne, the floor is yours. Says the President. Judge J'ai un souci. Je pense qu'il ne peut être partagé. Il ne peut qu'être partagé par toutes les parties. Lorsqu'il est fait référence à un document en audience, 
lorsque ce document est résumé, on peut considérer qu'il est produit au débat. That it is in, uh, Il est the important so que l'on puisse avoir une idée exacte exact du document, idea de quel document on parle. Document we are about. On doit aussi uh, avoir une idée des, euh, de la nature An idea du document, of the de son of the document, état de of its, traduction, uh, status, translation pour pouvoir status, éventuellement in order to faire quelques observations, demander des explications provide, ask, concernant provide sa recevabilité. Donc, j'ai compris que so c'était assez compliqué. Ce que je souhaiterais, so, c'est que like lorsqu'une partie a, euh, souhaite euh, produire au débat, document, on puisse avoir des références. Et vous nous avez fourni un tableau like, qui est tout à fait utile, parce que nous avons un certain nombre d'éléments. Je souhaiterais qu'on puisse avoir so la référence like par rapport à ce tableau qui contient des éléments aussi précieux. Elements that are Donc, so précieux. Ceci so, est destiné à faciliter indeed, le travail uh, des uns et des autres uh, et à être sûr que nous pouvons avoir sure un véritable débat contradictoire. Donc, so, uh, je ne sais pas, not, moi je, je dois avouer que je suis un peu perdu I par rapport confess, au document dont il a été fait état par la défense. Est-ce que vous pouvez me dire à to the document that was produced by the, that was referred to by the, de, by the defense. Can you tell us which number this corresponds to in your list? In the notifié. list that uh, you mentioned here, can you tell us which uh, document this is the document that was uh, brought forth by the defense? Uh, I share your honor's confusion. Uh, I don't know whether the defense are, re are referring to document number 30 in table E55.1, which the witness has identified as a confession, or whether document 30 refers to number 30 of another list. I must, con I must confess I was rather confused. Alors. Hier, la Chambre a demandé à la Défense ses observations sur les deux derniers documents de la liste que vous, le bureau des coprocureurs, avez distribué à toutes les parties hier. Au bas de cette liste, les deux derniers documents les deux derniers the documents. Two last documents. Il est mentionné well, it is there, IS annexe C, annex C D215, D2 annexe C, C numéro 39. C, 39. Vous l'avez pour le premier. Do have it, Et le deuxième And document, document D2-15, D2 annexe C, numéro 30. Annex C, number 30. Hier, Madame le juge Carroyne m'avait demandé uh, quelles étaient nos observations sur ces documents. Et ce que je documents. comprends maintenant, c'est qu'on vous demande de nous préciser à tous... Are, uh, où se trouvent ces deux documents dans are votre tableau your E55.1. E55 Est-ce que ça est clair it, it that, uh, Merci. Clear? <coughs> Alors, je crois que j'en ai trouvé un. Uh, uh, <laughs> S'agissant... Du document um, so concerning D2 document 15, D215, annex C, annex C, 30, C number 30, je pense sous votre contrôle, monsieur le procureur, um, il semblerait que ce soit le numéro 111 is, de votre liste. Number 111 from your list. Yes, indeed, Your Honor. Monsieur Bates, oui, effectivement, Monsieur le Juge. Voilà. Donc, je ne sais pas quelle est la référence Judge pour Lavin. le well, document. Well, then I don't know. However, um, what is the reference C, for a document at Annex C number 39? However.
the president. Dr. Greg Edison, the floor is yours if you have any observations. Yes, Your Honor. I believe I can provide some clarification on this issue. Uh, oui, Monsieur le Président, je crois que je peux vous fournir quelques précisions sur ce point. The document that counsel for the defense refers to as number 39 is an S21 confession of Chan Sam, alias Kang Chap, alias Sai. In the list of documents provided by the Office of Co-Prosecutors, there is also a reference to an S21 confession of Chan Sam, alias Kang Cha, alias Sai. But if um, I think those are the same documents, uh, that is number 31 in the list provided by the Office of Co-Prosecutors. Oui, Monsieur le Président, mais si c'est le cas, yes, ça ne correspond pas à ce que je viens de dire mon excellent collègue what my, uh, qui a indiqué précédemment qu'en principe, les 60 documents that, principle, de l'annexe C du rapport de C M. Etchison uh, figuraient dans le tableau avec une mention D215, par exemple, D215, numéro 15, temps. Example, parce que sur, sous le numéro 31, je ne vois 31, aucune référence reference au document de Monsieur Etchison. Pire que ça, and even worse, plus préoccupant, what's, what bothers me even si more vous allez maintenant sur Zaylab, now, example, et si vous regardez les numéros ERN correspondant au numéro 31, table, vous indiquez, vous, dans ce tableau, qu'il s'agit d'une confession du 25 confession octobre 1978, mais sur Zaylab, Zaylab however, à ces mêmes références, with the same on, reference numbers, il est indiqué it is une confession du 10 septembre 1978. Donc, ce ne serait pas le même document. So The President, uh, Dr. Gracerson, the floor is yours. Monsieur Chesson, je vous en prie. Your Honor, uh, I cannot be Monsieur certain Monsieur what Président. the source of the discrepancy je ne suis pas sûr mentioned de, by uh, Counsel for the Defense is, but I would like to make a general observation having to do with S21 confessions that could potentially uh, shed light on this issue. Quelque chose qui pourrait jeter quelques In lumières sur euh, les points qui nous occupent maintenant. Dans I beaucoup d'aveux, j'ai pu constater qu'il y a des dates multiples. Il peut y avoir une date sur la page de couverture, voire plusieurs dates sur la page de couverture. La confession peut inclure des sections qui ont été écrites au cours de chapitres qui ont, des parties days, parties qui ont été euh, écrites euh, différents different. jours. There may be a date at the end of Il the confession that is different from the date enfin des aveux on the cover of the confession. De de when people are cataloging these documents, sometimes it's difficult to predict which date they will pick up. De uh, thus, uh, it is not necessarily a different document simply because Donc on it has been cited as bearing different dates. On trouve ici deux dates différentes. The President, Judge Lavange, the floor is yours. 
toujours aux fins de précision. Judge Lavergne, ce qui est considéré comme for the sake of clarification, I would like to know what is considered as being requested to be included in the hearings. If I refer to the ERN number du document original. C'est un document qui, uh, me semble-t-il, comporte 153 pages. C'est un document qui, me semble-t-il, comporte 153 pages. Et nous avons And un résumé have a summary of this document, qui which comporte, euh, me semble-t-il, 12 pages. 12 pages. Nous n'avons pas de version française. Mais nous n'avons pas de version française. Quel, so, quel est le document, is the document qui doit être considéré comme étant produit au débat Le résumé, la confession en entier, summary, je dois avouer que là, j'aimerais avoir des précisions. Et like peut-être que M. l'espère peut nous dire this, sur quoi Edison vous êtes fondé sur l'intégralité du document, des, des aveux, document ou vous êtes-vous Or did you base yourself on a summary? Thank you, Your Honor. In many cases, I worked with one of our language specialists to go through the original Khmer language version of the confessions to identify passages that were of particular interest for analytical purposes. In other instances, we found that the analytical summary in English contained all of the necessary information for me to proceed with my own analysis. So I would suggest that both the summary and the full Khmer language original should be considered. Thank you,
So, the you... president. The president. The floor is yours for you, Judge Cartwright. Thank you, Mr. President. The president has asked me to invite uh, the co-prosecutors to begin uh, their questioning of um, the expert, Dr. Etchison. Uh, the president thanks the parties for these observations and attempts to assist it in understanding uh, the document references and reminds the parties that if any of them have concerns over any document which the prosecutors or any other party wishes to put before the court, then that concern can be raised immediately so that the court can make a ruling. Is there anything you wish to add uh, to that, Mr. President? The President, I do not have anything to add. The President, the co-prosecutor, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President, Your Honours. Um, no. Monsieur le Président, Madame, Monsieur les Juges. The President, uh, Mr. François Roux, you Mer Merci, take the Monsieur floor. le Président. Est-ce que je peux me permettre Mr. Une Roux, thank you, Mr. President. May I uh, please um, take the lead to ask you d'avancer? Uh, to make a suggestion so that we can Nous move forward. Dans un we are here in a trial in which a the accused has acknowledged and accepted most of the facts that are being held against him. Can we then le bureau des ask the co-prosecutor's office à se to focus mainly sur les faits on qui restent the facts en discussion that are still being discussed and to present trois ou quatre three documents. Four documents relating to these facts. Dans les juridictions in pénales internationales, international courts, on exige en général qu'un témoignage ou un document a statement or a document par be corroborated au moins by at un least autre témoignage ou un autre another document. statement or another document. Il me so que therefore, si it le seems to me that if the co-prosecutor's office would focus on providing us three or four pertinent relevant documents sur les faits relating to the facts that are being disputed by the accused, well, then I de think temps. that we could gain an enormous amount of time. Les faits qui ne sont pas and concerning the facts that are not being si challenged, well, then if you could just bring one or two preuve, relevant eh bien, documents, well, then I think le monde everybody gagnerait. would Et comme benefit from this. Après -midi, and as I said yesterday afternoon, qui especially the victims who are impatiently entendu, waiting je crois. to be Voilà la suggestion que je formule auprès de la Chambre. Merci. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. President. May I just uh, inquire of Maître Roux if he sees any difference uh, between the testimony of an expert and that of a witness to the direct facts acknowledged by the accused. It seems to me that the difficulty is that the accused is not always in a position to accept certain technical facts uh, enunciated by an expert, and therefore an expert's testimony may seem on occasions repetitive, but on other occasions may illuminate uh, and uh, explain uh, a much broader picture for the benefit of the court. For that reason, uh, although we have not deliberated on this, 
I can see a difference in the approach to the questioning of an expert when it comes to the agreed facts that you have raised. Do you have any comment on that? Thank you for allowing me de rappeler qu'avec tout le respect que j'ai pour le travail de M. Greg Etchison, il n'est pas véritablement un expert. Well, despite that, il he is appartient not really an au bureau des co-procureurs. Co il ne faut quand même pas l'oublier. So il est ici he la voix de l'accusation. Ne le perdons pas de vue. So let's not lose sight of this. Uh, but you haven't answered my question, which is a general one at this point. Uh, do you accept my proposition that there may be a need to examine an expert more extensively than a witness who simply repeats what the accused has already acknowledged in the agreed facts. Oui, madame, je, je, je pense que nous allons avoir d'excellents experts qui vont venir dans ce tribunal et comme vous l'indiquez, ils peuvent donner une vue d'ensemble extrêmement utile, y compris M. Etchison. Ce, que je, ce sur quoi je suis plus réservé, c'est sur la nécessité de ramener des dizaines, voire des centaines de documents à l'appui du témoignage de l'expert. A priori, je fais confiance à l'expert. Si j'ai un problème, je vais lui demander, monsieur, sur quel document vous appuyez-vous, mais je n'ai pas besoin, dès le début, qu'il me déverse des dizaines de documents. Voilà. Mais je considère qu'effectivement, nous aurons des très bons experts dans, dans, dans ce procès et j'ai hâte que vous puissiez les entendre. As we all are, Maître Roux, uh, however, I don't think it's the role of the Chamber to uh, tell the prosecutors or any party what documents they should put before the chamber until we have had the opportunity to assess those. And of course, you will have that opportunity to comment if you are, uh, you consider them irrelevant, repetitious, or any of the other uh, criteria that we must abide by. Thank you. The president, uh, the lawyer of the civil party, you take the floor. Monsieur le co-avocat des partis civils, groupe de partis civils, I am Gong Pisei, the civil party lawyer. I would like to share my comments concerning the evidence I found. According to the Constitution of the Kingdom of Cambodia, the prosecution's office has been used to bring forward the criminal action to them. So the prosecution office has the role to find evidence that an evidence must be proved beyond the reasonable doubt. And to do so, uh, there is no way to measure how the court co is convinced uh, whether those document, uh, those uh, uh, evidence are presumed to be beyond the reasonable doubt. 
d'éléments so, de preuve. The prosecutors de tout are not bound uh, to any certain amount of documents to be put uh, before the court to uh, make sure that the documents are proved um, uh, beyond the reasonable uh, doubt. And I really appreciate them for their great effort in uh, putting forward those uh, ample evidence before the court. And according to rule, uh, the internal rule, rule 87, I would like uh, the chamber to please uh, implement the rule strictly. Thank you. Applique cette règle en conséquence. Je vous remercie. The president, uh, the court would like to take an adjournment uh, for 15 minutes. The court official, could you please uh, make sure that the expert uh, can be brought to his waiting room?